We'll take a look at some of the calculations that are involved in compounding emulsions. Specifically, we'll focus on the calculations related to the surfactants. Uh, just as a quick review, the HLB scale is a measure of the hydrophilicity or lipophilicity of the different surfactants. The total scale ranges from 1 to 40, with the low numbers representing uh, more lipophilic surfactants and the high numbers reflecting more hydrophilic surfactants. If we look at these two examples of surfactants, the Arla Cell 60 and the Tween 60, the Arla Cell 60 with the HLB of 4.7 would be the more lipophilic surfactant, while the Tween 60 with an HLB of 14.9 would be the more hydrophilic surfactant. Oftentimes it's necessary to blend more than one surfactant together in order to achieve the desired HLB value. Um, so what we'll do is quickly review those calculations. In this example, we want to combine together the Arla Cell 60 and Tween 60 in a 3 to 1 ratio. So what we're going to do is uh, basically determine the fraction um, of each of the partners and uh, multiply that by their respective HLB values, and we can sum them together. So what we're going to do here is our cell 60 is present in a 3 to 1 ratio, so 3 out of 4 parts is equal to a fraction of 0.75. We can multiply that by the HLB value of 4.7, which gives us a value of 3.525. Uh, we do the same thing for the tween 60. One part out of four is 25% fraction times the 14.9, which is 3.725. So we can add these together, and we come up with a value of 7.25. So that's how you would do that type calculation. This is another way where you might see this type of calculation. So in this example, we're combining the same two surfactants, and we want to achieve a 20 mils of a surfactant with an HLB value of 9. So we can just set this up using allegation. So we'll put our 14.9, our high HLB, top left, 4.7 in the bottom. We want a value of 9.0. So if we subtract the 14.9 minus 9, we get 5.9 parts. 9 minus the 4.7 is 4.3 parts. So that's a total of 10.2 parts. And we know that that is equal to 20 mils. I'm running out of space here, so what we'll do then is say if we need 4.3 parts of the tween 60, we can multiply that by the 20 ml per 10.2 parts. So we need roughly 8.4 mils of tween 60. We can do the same thing with the Arla cell. 60, and we need 11.6 mils, and then you can just add those together to make sure they add up to 20, which they do, um, so we'd want to mix together 8.4 mils of R of tween 60 with 11.6 mils of Arla cell 60 in order to get that 20 mls with an HLB of 9. Next, we'll take a look at calculating the minimum amount of surfactant that's necessary. In this case, these are our QS calculations. What we can say is that the QS is the minimum amount of surfactant necessary to form the emulsion. That's going to be equal to 6 times the density of the surfactant mixture, uh, the rho S, over the density of the dispersed phase. Um, that whole 
term will be divided by 10 minus 0.5 times your RHLB value. And then we will add to that 4 times Q, which is the percentage of the continuous phase, divided by 1,000. So let's look at an example where we're forming a oil in water emulsion uh, with this recipe. The first thing we'll do is go ahead and calculate the RHLB, uh, since that's the only variable that we're missing from our equation. So with our RHLB, we have the 60% or 0.6 um, times HLB of 10 for the paraffin, so that's 6.0. Uh, beeswax fraction is 0.4 times the HLB of 9, uh, gives us a value of 3.6. So we have an RHLB equal to 9.6. So now we're ready to go ahead and plug everything into our equation. So here our QS is going to be equal to 6 times the density of our mixture, the 1.05, divided by the density of our particle, um, or dispersed phase, so here it's the 0 0.85 that's going to be divided by 10 minus 0 0.5 times our RHLB, which we just calculated to be 9.6. And then we're going to add to this 4 times the percentage of the continuous phase. That's our water, so 60 divided by 1,000. And so if we plug all this in, to our calculators, we'll get a QS of 1.425 plus 0.24. So QS is going to equal 1.665 grams. And so that will be the minimum amount we need often that would just be rounded up to um, the nearest um, gram, so we'd probably round to two grams. We'll go ahead and do another example uh, since students are having difficulty with these calculations. Uh, this time what we'll be doing is calculating for the minimum amount of surfactant we need to form a water and oil emulsion, so we've changed that. We'll start with, again, calculating our RHLB um, of the oil phase. So we again have a fraction of 0.6 for paraffin times the HLB of 4 gives us 2.4. For the beeswax, we have a fraction of 0.4 times the HLB of 5 gives us a value of 2.0. So the combined um, RHLB is going to be equal to 4.4. Now we're ready to plug everything in. So again, our QS is going to be equal to 6 times the density of our combination, the 0 0.87, divided by our dispersed phase. Uh, this time we're going to use the water, divided by 10 minus 0 0.5 times our RHLB, plus 4 times our continuous phase. This time it's the oil. So percentage is 40 divided by 1,000. So that's going to get us QS equal to 0 0.669 plus 0 0.16. So QS will equal... 0 0.829 grams. That would be the minimum amount, so that would likely be rounded up to 1 grams in practice. Uh, so that ends the uh, series of calculations involving the use of surfactants in emulsions.